The Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Sweet Dreaming. a string around your finger to remind yourself of something to do? Well, I've had a string around one of mine all day, so I wouldn't forget that this is my last chance to make a suggestion to brand new June brides in this month of June. When you set up that exciting new home, whether it's a small apartment or a big house, you're going to have linoleum on your kitchen or kitchenette floor. You'll pick out a lovely pattern, and the freshness of the colors will make the kitchen such a cheerful place to work in. Now, wouldn't you like to keep the linoleum looking fresh and new? You can easily by protecting it right now with Johnson Self-Polishing Glow Coat and periodically giving it another glow coat application. There's practically no work to it, no rubbing or buffing. You simply apply and let dry. In 20 minutes, the linoleum will be sparkling with beauty that is safe against scratches, wear, and dirt. Glow Coat makes linoleum last much longer. You can use Glow Coat, of course, on your other floors, too. So get that good old Glow Coat labor-saving habit. Order Johnson's self-polishing glow coat right away. When you're frantically packing to go away, there are a thousand and one details to take care of. And the division of labor is the same at 79 Westful Vista as in any other home. The wife does a thousand things and the husband does one. You know who we mean. Fibber McGee and Molly. Did you call the gas company, McGee? Did I, baby, what I call that gas company. (laughs) They says they couldn't come out to shut off the gas till a week from Wednesday. And I says, oh, no, I says, and they says, no, and I says, Never mind the snappy dialogue. (laughs) How about the telephone? I'm not going to take any chances with them. I'll cut the wires just before we leave the house. <laughs> now, let me see. I've got to put the car in the dead storage. See? Well, oh, dear. Come in. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? I'm Dr. Davenport, Mr. McGee, oh. from the Here Today and Gone Tomorrow Insurance Company. I believe you applied for additional insurance. Oh, did you, McGee? Yes, I, I, I thought I'd better, Molly. You, you know how it is. If we're going to be in the movies, I can't be too careful. <laughs> Might have to do stunts like leaping off a boxcar on an airplane or something. <laughs> uh, oh, dear. What you go through for your public. Yeah. And vice versa. <laughs> now, if you just open the top of your bathrobe, Mr. McGee. Ah, that's it. Yes, 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 yes. Now, don't, don't, don't worry about my chest, Doc. It's as sound as a dollar. Try it with inflation. (laughs) I hope I'm not here at an inconvenient time, Mrs. McGee. Oh, you are, Doctor, but so are we, and there's nothing to be done about it. (laughs) You go ahead and examine my husband. I'll just go about my work. Hey, Molly, don't forget to call the light company now. For the last time, McGee, I tell you, they won't buy back those burnt-out bulbs. (laughs) (laughs) They got it. I've been saving them for two years. Please, Mr. McGee, hold still. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. How's my heart, Doc? Well, I can tell better if you'll stop talking a moment. Okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> uh, splendid, splendid. Now the lungs, please. Oh, my lungs are fine, Doc. I take setting up exercises every morning. You do? Oh, sure he does. He sets up, takes a look at the clock, groans and collapses again. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'll run upstairs and pack... Oh, my. That's the telephone ringing, Doc. <laughs> excuse me, man. Hello, Fibber McGee speaking. Who? Whistful Vista Gazette? Oh, Oh, yeah. Well, look, forward our subscription to us in care of the RKO Studios, Hollywood, California. Yeah. Be glad to get the Gazette out there. Yeah. I'll never get so big as an actor that I'll forget the old hometown. (laughs) I'll say you won't. (laughs) Okay. Thanks very much. What'd you say, Molly? (laughs) Never mind. Now, as soon as the doctor gets through with you, McGee... You run around the house and see that all the windows are locked. Okay, the lock's busted off the kitchen window, but I'll put a mousetrap on the windowsill. 
Oh, that'll be fine. When we come back, we'll find three strange fingers and no silverware. Uh, please sit down, Mr. McGee, and cross one leg over the other. Oh, okay, Doc. Uh, which leg do you want crossed over the other? I can do it either way. <laughs> Pretty agile for a guy my age. <laughs> either one, either one. I'm just testing your reflexes. Ow! Oh, fine, fine, fine. Yes, 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 yes. Now the other one, please. Oh! Hey, you gotta hit me so hard, Doc. Sorry, I'm sorry, but I must emphasize the flexion to counteract the state of nervous tension attendant on the current state of excitement. Otherwise, the diagnosis might be minimized to a deleterious degree. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, I, I understand that all right. <laughs> You do? Oh, sure. Then I wish you'd explain it to me. I muffed it all through medical school. <laughs> yes. Oh, McGee. Yeah? Have you got the railroad ticket? Sure, I got them right here. You see, Doc? Well, don't show them to me. I'm not going anywhere. Oh. Don't lose them, McGee. Don't worry. I pride myself on never losing railroad tickets. Well, as long as we've always gone places by bus, that's nothing to brag about. <laughs> Is he in pretty good condition, Doctor? Well, apparently, Mrs. McGee, apparently... You a heavy smoker, Mr. McGee? He doesn't use tobacco in any form, Doctor. Why, Molly, how can you... I smoke ten cigars a day, and you know it. You call those tobacco? If that isn't alfalfa, I'll eat it. <laughs> oh, dear, put your bathrobe back on, McGee. It's Mrs. Uppington. Oh, what does that old moose want? <laughs> She's about as opportune as a hailstorm on a hayride. Now, listen here. Be nice to her, dearie. We won't be seeing her all summer. You know that. Oh, that's right. Come in, Abigail. <laughs> Do, Mrs. McGee and Mr. McGee. I oh, I'm so sorry. Am I intruding? Oh, not at all, Uppy. You met Doc Davenport. Uh, Doc, this is Mrs. Uppington, who is high C in our social scale. Oh, please, Mr. McGee. <laughs> How do you do, Doctor? <laughs> Mrs. Uppington, I hope you don't mind if I proceed with Mr. McGee's examination. Oh, of course not, Doctor. Don't mind me. <laughs> Your teeth seem to be in good shape. Thank you. Everyone says it. Oh, after. he means McGee, Abigail. Oh, of course. Silly of me. <laughs> oh, tell me, my dear, is it true that you're going to Hollywood to act in a motion picture with Edgar Bergen? Mm, yes, it is, Abigail. Isn't it thrilling? Oh, promise me you'll do something for me, dear. While you're out there... You ought to have your tonsils out. Really? I didn't realize... He means me, Uppy. Oh. How's my weight, Doc? Well, you're a bit pudgy about the pistol pockets, McGee. <laughs> What uh, games do you play? Well, let's see. Uh... Uh, what can we do for you in Hollywood, Abigail? Well, my dear, I've always been a bit of a... Rummy. A bit of a rummy, and I... Now, please. <laughs> I wasn't talking to you, Uppy. Doc asked me what games I play. <laughs> Maybe we better go in the other room, Abigail, while the doctor finishes with McGee. Oh, don't mind us. It's good for the patient to be thinking of something else during the examination. Oh. Now, I'd like to take your blood pressure, Mr. McGee. Uh, roll up your sleeve, please. Okay. You'll pardon my nude biceps, Uppy. <laughs> oh, certainly. Let's have no false modesty, Mr. McGee. <laughs> but as I was saying, when you get to Hollywood, my dear, yeah. will you please look up Hedda Hopper and ask where she gets those perfectly ducky hats? I think I could wear the same type because everyone says my face is... Well, below normal. <laughs> I beg your pardon, I... Oh, you, you meant Mr. McGee's blood pressure, of course. <laughs> Did you, Doc? Yes, 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 certainly. <laughs> now, your waistline, Mr. McGee. Where's my tape measure? Oh, here it is. Now, stand still, please. Well, I'm not sure we'll meet Hedda Hopper, Abigail, but I'll certainly ask her about the hats, because she and you must be about the same age. Thirty-nine. Honest, I'd have swore it was only thirty-seven. Oh, now, boys, you flat. He us. meant my waistline. <laughs> you eat too much, dearie. Why, Mrs. McGee, I don't. She means her husband. Who's that? Who, your husband? Why, he's this man right here. I meant the man at the door. Well, what makes you think the man at the door eats too much? Dad, rat it, go to the door, somebody. We gotta get going. Molly, take up the away. Hurry up, Doc. Can't you see we gotta get going? Yes, I
salt tank, dearie. Did you finish with the insurance doctor? Yes, he's all through. He's gone. All but a couple of the usual details. <clears throat> hey, did you call the dairy to tell him we won't want any more milk? No, I've been too busy. You call. Him. Okay, give me the phone. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me the whistle, Mr. Derrick. Oh, is that you, Mert? Oh. <laughs> How's every little thing, Mert? There's eh? What's eh, Mert? Your sister's wedding. Oh, that's terrible. Train wreck, eh? Oh, heavenly days, McGee. What happened? Her sister got her wedding dress caught on one of the pews and wrecked her train. <laughs> What's eh, Mert? Yeah, we're going to Hollywood. Going to be stars in the cinema. <laughs> yeah. Huh? What do you mean you'll take vanilla? I says cinema, not cinnamon. <laughs> oh, okay, Mert. <laughs> I'll call the dairy later. Goodbye. Now, let's see, Molly. I think we better... Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Now what? Come in. Hello, kids. Say, I hear you're going to Hollywood to make a movie. Is that right? Probably not, but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> Why, old-timer? Look, if you meet Lana Turner, tell her I'm knitting her a sweater, will you, kids? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think she has a sweater, Mr. Old-timer. Yeah. She's got a hundred sweaters. And that ain't Hayes. <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. But that ain't the way I heard it. The way I heard it, one feller says, t'other feller, say, says. <laughs> See where Fibber McGee and Molly are gonna make a picture call? Look who's laughing. Ain't that terrible? What's terrible about it, says t'other feller. Well, says the first feller, can't you just hear the critics saying, we'll bite who is? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing personal, kids. I sure hope you make good, and I know you will, because other people have who can't act half as good as you can, which ain't saying much. Though so personally, I think you've got what it takes. It don't take too much. If it does, you can always go back on the radio, and that's what some people are saying already. Oh, now they've gone back on the radio. <laughs> For shame, kids. <laughs> earth was he talking about? I don't know. That old fuddy-duddy wouldn't know which end was up at a fraternity initiation. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, let's see. I you better, better get... get out of that bathrobe and into some clothes, dear. Oh, I don't want to get dressed till the last minute. Too much to do. Say, did you tell Uncle Dennis we were going away? Sure, I told him. But you know, he hates Hollywood. Why? Well, on account of Sonia Henney, mostly. Why, Sonia's a cute kid. I What's know. he got against her? Well, he thinks it's a crime to make all that ice and then skate on it. <laughs> well... Hey, folks, when are you leaving for the coast? Oh, hi, Harold. We're leaving in about an hour. Why? Well, when are you coming back to Wistful Vista? The last Tuesday in September, Mr. Wilcox. We're going to Hollywood to make a moving picture. Yeah. A talking picture, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I want to talk to you about. I've got a marvelous idea for a movie story. And if you sell it, I'll give you 50% of whatever you get. 50% of a dirty look is hardly worth the effort. <laughs> yeah, besides, what do you know about film stories? What do you mean, what do I know about them? Oh. Why, I've helped write the greatest film story ever produced. Oh, mm. I should have said it. I hadn't heard about that. Molly, you've been hearing it for six and a half years. Mm. All about how Johnson's Wax puts a film of protection against dust and dirt and dampness on your floors and furniture and woodwork. Ladies and gentlemen, after this little lecture is over, we will pass a hat among yous after we pull it down over Wilcox's ears. <laughs> Don't mind him, Mr. Wilcox. What's the rest of the scenario? Well, it's a very simple story, but it's got everything. Glamour, love interest, conflict, and comedy value. Oh. The glamour of a beautiful, well-kept home. The love of a housewife for something that saves her so much time and effort. And conflict between Johnson's wax and the wicked effects of dust and dirt. Where's the comedy come in, Mr. Cecil B. De Wilcox? <laughs> well, come to think of it, it's too serious a subject for comedy. Oh. And anyway, with Johnson's wax on the furniture, you can't expect to see Marx, brothers. Oh. oh. You'll feel better after you rest 13 weeks. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy your trip, folks, and I'll see you in the fall. So long. Goodbye, Mr. Wilcox. Have a nice summer. So long, Hilo. Mark's brothers. Wow. That guy's going to wind up with his arm in a sling, reaching for him like that. <laughs> Incidentally, McGee, I want to hear all the Johnson Wax shows this summer. Yeah? You know, I think Ransom Sherman is a very funny man. Yeah? They're going to call him haphazard on the radio. Well, I hope he doesn't get too funny, because... <laughs> Heavenly days, we'll never get ready to go this way. Come in. 
Hello, Mr. McGee. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Oh, hi, Wimple. Won't you come in and sit down, Mr. Wimple? Oh, no, thank you, Mrs. McGee. I just wanted to come and tell you goodbye for the summer and wish you a very nice vacation. <laughs> well, thanks, Wimple. You going away yourself? No, I don't think so. I should go away for my health, but my wife doesn't want me to. Oh. <laughs> Well, why don't you go away if it's for your health? The healthiest thing I can do, Mrs. McGee, is not argue with my wife. <laughs> well, it was on a vacation trip that I met her, you know. Oh, on a vacation trip. That's very romantic. Yes. She was paddling a canoe and it tipped over. I swam out and rescued her. Oh, that's wonderful. A hero. Mm, that was very brave of you, Mr. Wimple. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I had it all to do over again. <laughs> Goodbye for now. Oh, don't be in a hurry, Wimple. <laughs> Stick around and breathe the air of freedom for a while. Oh, I, I simply can't, Mr. McGee. I'm working tonight, carrying water for the elephants, you know. Oh, is there a circus in town? Uh, what? Is there a circus plan here? Uh, oh, oh, no. <laughs> the elephants? Uh-huh. That's the name of my wife's softball team. <laughs> I, I carry water for them. Well, do have a nice trip and goodbye. <laughs> Poor Mr. Wimple. He has a fairly cheerful outlook for such a henpecked little fella. Well, that's easily explained. He's been under his wife's thumb so long he's looking at the world through rose-colored nail polish. <laughs> Hey, we better get busy, Molly. Our train leaves in 20 minutes. Well, I'm minutes. all ready, McGee. I just want to shut off the refrigerator. Say, what is this anyway? We may not enjoy packing up, but the front door's getting an awful bang out of it. I can... Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hello there, little girl. I haven't got time to talk to you now. Why? Well, we're packing up. That's why we're going away for a vacation. Gee, what you want to go away for, hmm? I had mine right here. Oh, have you had your vacation? Sure. Right here on my arm, see? It hurt like 62. <laughs> That's a vaccination. I was talking about vacation. Oh. Well, where are you going on your vaccination? Hmm? Where are you? Hollywood, sis. We're going to be in a movie. Gee, honest? Uh-huh. Hey, hey, will you send me a photograph of my favorite actor when you get out there, mister? Hmm, will you? Hmm? Why, certainly, sis. We'll be palling around with all them big stars. You'll be seeing pictures of me posing in front of my swimming pool, riding around in a big limousine, sailing around on a yacht with the big shots. Okay. So name your star, sis. I'll get his photo for you. Anybody, mister? Anybody. Name the biggest star you can think of, and I'll bet within three weeks, me and him will be wearing each other's clothes. <laughs> Eating all our meals together, going to nightclubs uh... together. Going for long walks, posing for publicity shots together. Why, me and him will probably be known as the Damon and Pythias of Hollywood. Uh... Gee, that'll be wonderful, mister. Yeah. <laughs> Send me a picture of him wearing your clothes, will you? I don't know what's so hysterically oh. funny about that, sis. Who is your favorite star? Gene Autry's heart. <laughs> the King's men are very happy to repeat their popular version of The Reluctant Dragon. One fine day while on my way to Ipswich by the sea, I met a rather charming chap who asked me into tea. It seems he was a dragon, you know the kind with wings, teeth and tails and claws and scales and all those dragon-like details. I admit I jumped a bit when he began to sing. I'm the reluctant dragon, what ho, quite so, the very reluctant dragon, oh very, very, don't you know, they call me the timid dragon, what rot, I'm not, I just won't fight, I'd rather play, I know I shan't get hurt that way, here we go gathering nuts in May, I'm so reluctant, oh so reluctant, after we had sipped our tea, a thought popped in my head, a dragon here, ah oh, Joe, that's queer, he really should be dead. I said, I say, look here, I said. Aren't you a bit extinct? He looked at me and gave a cry and wiped a teardrop from his eye. Heaved his bosom with a sigh. Then he coyly winked. I'm the reluctant dragon. That's me. Every 
Gildersleeve, that's the silliest idea I ever heard of. Well, by George McGee, if you were so what is Mr. Gildersleeve's idea, McGee? He says we ought to, what we ought to do is have somebody live in this house while we're gone. Ain't that dumb? Well, I don't know if I thought we could sublet it to the right people. Well, I didn't exactly mean sublet, Mrs. McGee. I had more in mind the care of your house. Oh. Imagine coming back in the fall to a nice clean house. Windows washed. Furniture all Johnson's waxed and polished. Shelves cleaned. Wouldn't that be worth more than any petty little sum you might get for rent? Well, it almost is to me, Mr. Gildersleeve. I wonder who we could get, though. Well, uh, <laughs> it just happens that my wife's brother and his family are going to be here all summer, and I thought... Oh, oh, oh no, you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to chisel some free lodging for your relatives, eh, Gildersleeve? Well... Well, you can just keep the visiting fireman on your own hook and ladder. <laughs> now, McGee, I don't think Mr. Gildersleeve meant... That's me. all right, Mrs. McGee. I'm not angry. I won't see my little chum until last week in September, and uh, I refuse to quarrel with him. <laughs> my goodness, I'll miss you, little pal. Ah, yeah. uh, shucks. The Spanish serenader's coming out in him. <laughs> what are you get... after, anyway, Gildersleeve? The use of our lawnmower for the summer? What did you say? I said, what are you after? The use of our lawnmower for the summer or something? In the first place, it isn't your lawnmower. It's mine. And in the second place... What do you mean, it's your lawnmower? Just because I let you borrow it once or twice. That's all right, McGee. I was glad to get it back, if only for a day or so. (laughs) He's right, McGee. It is his lawnmower. Oh, yeah? It's my lawnmower, and I can prove it. I know exactly where the bill of sale is. Where? Right here in the hall closet. (laughs) (laughs) I straightened it out this morning, dear. Well, where's that bill of sale? Okay, so it's your lawnmower. Take your old clover clipper, Gildersleeve. I'm a movie actor now anyway. I ain't mowing my own lawn anymore. You're not, eh? (laughs) You probably will be too busy at that. Yes. Mowing other people's lawns. (laughs) You don't seem to have much faith in McGee's future in Hollywood, Mr. Gildersleeve. Mrs. McGee, if all his fans were gathered in one spot, they wouldn't make enough breeze to ruffle baby Sandy's hair ribbon. (laughs) You wait, Gildersleeve. You'll be reading in the papers about me. Hometown boy makes good. Read the rest of it, McGee. Huh? Hometown boy makes good time hitchhiking home from coast. <laughs> now you look here, you All people. right, boys, that's enough. Do you realize we only have a few minutes to catch our train, dearie? Oh, boy, that's right. Uh, go on home, Gildersleeve. Can't you see you're holding us up? That's all right. If I have to pay more than a dime to see you in the movies, you'll be holding me up. <laughs> <laughs> have a nice trip, Mrs. McGee. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve, uh, and goodbye. Goodbye, little chum. So long, Trucky. <laughs> got to hurry like everything. You sure you got the railroad tickets? Yes, yes, yes. I got the tickets. Here, you see? Did you send for a taxi cab? Yes, it ought to be here any minute. Now, how about the trunks? Are they on the way to the station? Shucks, they're all in the baggage car by this time. I sent them trunks down there long ago. You did? You got to hand it to me, Molly. I'm efficient at this traveling business. I think of everything. Well, I guess you do at that, dearie. Now, hurry up and get out of that bathrobe and into some clothes. We've got to go. Okay, I'll run upstairs and... What's the matter? Oh, gosh. (laughs) I... I ain't got any clothes. I packed them all in the trunk. Oh, heavenly days. How are we going oh, to... I... There's the taxi cab. What are we going to do? Oh, I don't know. I can't go to the station in my bathrobe. Oh, hand me oh. the phone, quick. Yeah. Hello, operator. Uh, give me the union station. Uh, no, 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 Mert. I haven't time for one of those now. <laughs> Get me the union station. Hello, union station. Uh, Mrs. McGee calling. We're leaving on the train in ten minutes for the coast. 
And my husband... Oh, boy, am I sick. My husband is sick, so have a wheelchair meet us at the taxi entrance. Thank huh? you. Get your hat, dearie. I'll get a blanket. Yeah, uh, give me some face powder. I want to look pale. Okay. Okay. Come on, McGee. Oh. Hollywood, here we come the hard way. <laughs> Bibber and Molly will be back in just a moment. Say, next time you go shopping, stop a moment just before you're ready to pay your bill and ask yourself, have I forgotten anything? Isn't there something that comes in a red and yellow package that I was going to buy? Oh, yes, Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. You know, it would really be too bad not to have glow coat in the house. Imagine going back to the tiresome, back-breaking job of floor scrubbing. Makes you tired to think of it, doesn't it? Seriously, it would be bad. Bad for you and bad for your linoleum because continual scrubbing ruins linoleum. Glow Coat, on the other hand, protects linoleum. Protects it against scratches, wear, and dirt. Protects it with a hard, beautiful polish that keeps the colors fresh and bright. Johnson's Glow Coat is called self-polishing because it needs no rubbing or buffing. Just apply and let dry. If you aren't already a Glow Coat user, try it just once, won't you? Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we want to thank all of you for your wonderful support and encouragement during the past year. It's people like you who make people like us like people like you. <laughs> and we wish uh, the new Johnson Wax show, Haphazard, starring Ransom Sherman, all the success in the world. We think the sponsor has made a great choice in him, and he's made a great choice in sponsors. Don't you think so, McGee? Well, uh, I don't know. What? After all the Johnson Wax people have done for us? What's the matter with you? Well, take a look. Almost seven years on the air for them, and what have I got? No pants. Oh, my. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for the home and for industry. Inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night for the premiere of the new Johnson summer show, Haphazard, starring Ransom Sherman. And we remind you that America's first line of defense is you and your support. So invest to the best of your ability in defense savings bonds. Good night. Yes, it certainly pays to keep that car of yours looking its best. It's good business, and you get more pleasure out of a car that's wax-polished. That's why car owners have welcomed Johnson's Car New, the easy-to-use auto polish that both cleans and wax polishes in one application. Two jobs at the same time. Give your car a Car New beauty treatment. The cost is low, the result's amazing. Ask for Johnson's Car New, spelled C-A-R-N-U. This is the National Broadcasting Company. program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Marion and Jim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, the King's Men, and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with, ooh, what you said. <laughs>
most likely know by now, our hero and heroine made what they firmly believe to be dramatic history in Hollywood on the Lux Theater of the Air. And here, glowing with triumph, swelled with success, eagerly looking forward to the plaudits of their friends, here, speeding homeward as fast as modern streamlined transportation will carry them, yes, here on the bus, approaching Wistful Vista, we find Bibber McGee and Molly. Any sandwiches left, Molly? Well, let me see. Yes, dearie, just one. Boy, it's lucky we're almost home. We'll just about make it. Just one sandwich, you say, huh? Yes. Do you want it, McGee? Oh, no, no, no. You go ahead and have it. No, no, you have No, you. No, you. Oh, stop this. Why don't you have it, Molly? Well, I don't know. Aren't you hungry? Oh, I can wait. Well, so can I. What kind of a sandwich is it, Molly? I'll take a look. It's ham. Hmm. Oh, ham, huh? <clears throat> With mustard? Well, let's see. Yes, with mustard. You don't like them with mustard, do you, Molly? Whatever gave you that idea, that's the only way I do like a ham sandwich. Oh, well, oh, shucks, go ahead and eat it then, Molly. Uh, unless it's too stale by now. I'd hate to have you eat a stale sandwich. Personally, I don't mind stale bread. It's kind of, I kind of like it, in fact. I do, too. You do? Hmm. Well, let's feel of it. Hmm, say, that ain't so stale. I know. I had it wrapped up pretty well in wax paper. Hmm. There's nothing like wax to preserve things, is there? <laughs> That's what I hear. And from a very reliable source, too. They say that... Oh, heavenly days, McGee. Let's quit stalling. Here, eat the sandwich. Oh, no, no, no. I ain't gonna. You eat it. But, but quit waving it at me. <laughs> well, don't shove my hand away like that. But... Oh, look out now. Oh, shucks. You dropped it on the floor. I'll get it. McGee, leave it lay. It's all dirty by now. I know it. I just wanted to shove it under the seat so we wouldn't trample all over it. And still any sandwich sandwich under the seat with hot food. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we don't have to argue about that anymore. No, I guess we don't. No. Here, let me wipe that mustard off your chin. Huh? <laughs> uh, part of it must have flew up and hit me in the face. <laughs> Look, we're getting close to town, McGee. How can you tell? We're sideswiping more cars. <laughs> well, the old town hasn't changed much since we've been away. We've only been gone a week, foolish. Huh? Oh, yes. Well, it's been a wonderful experience. Working with all them actors. Ah, oh, yes, indeed. Cecil B. DeMille. Yes. Did you hear DeMille asking my advice about directing? No, I didn't. Why should he ask your advice about directing? Mm, I don't know, but he did. He says, look here, Sonny, don't you think this would be a better play if you just turned one page of the script at a time? <laughs> and I says, why, yes, Cecil, I says, I believe it would, he says. And he says, uh, okay, put that taffy apple away, it'll have to rehearsal. <laughs> Your pages are getting all stuck together. <laughs> and I says, now, no, never here. mind, now, never mind. I think we're getting close to home, dearie. It's time to put the dark glasses on and get out our fountain pens, huh? Fountain pens? Certainly. Autographs, you know. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> now I know how a genuine actor feels, Molly. So do I. How? Hungry. <laughs> Let's go uh, and ask the driver how much farther we have to go, McGee. Okay. Come on. One side there, sis. Get out of the aisle. We want to get past. You didn't say please, I bet you. <laughs> please. Hmm? I said... Oh, well, where'd you get on, sis? On the front end, through that little door. <laughs> no, no, I didn't mean that. Well, you must have. That's the only one there is, I betcha. Dad, rather, I wasn't talking about how you got on. I meant where. Hmm? I... Ah, oh. uh, sis, sometimes I think you do this just to befuddle me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, I'll, I'll bet you don't even know what befuddle me. I bet you I do, I bet you. Hi, diddle, diddle, the cat and befuddle. <laughs> That's the fiddle. What is? Befuddle. You mean the, the fiddle's befuddle or befuddle the fiddle? Hmm. 
I mean the foot... The, 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 look, sis. As the football players said when they flunked in geometry, I think we better drop the subject. You know where we've been? Mm-mm. No. You don't? Oh, come on now. Guess. No. You must have seen the labels on our suitcase. Mm-mm. No. Sis, do you mean to stand there with your little mouth full of ticket stubs and tell me you don't know where we've been? Yes. Oh, then you do know. No. What? Hmm? I... <laughs> Look, sis, we've been clear out in Hollywood. Well, don't you believe me? No, there isn't any such place, I bet you. You just made it up. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, yes, you did. Oh, now, now, well, if there ain't any such place as Hollywood, where do all the moving pictures come from? See, that's easy. They come from that little booth in the back of the theater. <laughs> Well, if you're so smart, sis, you must know what we were doing out in Hollywood. Must have been in all the papers. Can you give me a clue? Hmm? Sure. Now, what is it that happens on Monday? On, on Monday. Monday, huh? Mm-hmm. Cecil B. DeMille is connected with it, and it's got something to do with soap. Soap, huh? There. Now, do you know why we went to Hollywood? Yes. You went to deliver Mr. DeMille's washing. <laughs> dearie, you can't make an impression on anything that small. <laughs> I'll bet she's cute out in the garden in her little sunbonnet, <laughs> giving the bees and the flowers the lowdown on life. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, McGee, do you want me to talk to the driver, or will you? Oh, you ask him, Molly. Men drivers are more used to having women talk over their shoulders. All right. Oh, uh, driver. No, lady, we don't stop again until we get to the station and uh, then... But now, driver... You should have thought of that in the last stop. <laughs> Sit down until we get in. Now, take it easy, bud. We just wanted to know how... Yes, Vista. Mm. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. Vista. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. Come on, McGee. I'll take the paper bags, and you bring the suitcase, and be careful now. That rope is coming a little loose. Hey, Molly. Look. Over there at the railroad station. What's all the excitement? There's a brass band and a lot of silk hats and banners. They must be expecting somebody on the train. Yeah, let's go over and see what... Hey, wait a minute. I know who they're waiting for. Who? Us. What? Look, who is it that's just come back from scoring a tremendous success in Hollywood? Why, oh, McGee, you don't Why, think Why, of that... course. They probably expected us to be all swelled up and come home in a private car on the streamlined train. Well, oh, but what will we do? The streamliner isn't due for 30 minutes. No, but look... We just got time to sneak home, clean up a little bit, whip up a couple of simple, modest speeches, and get back to the station. Come on, I'm Molly. But, McGee, now, how can we get off the train and be met by all those people when we aren't even on the train? A mere detail, Mrs. McGee, a mere detail. (laughs) We'll duck across the tracks in the railroad yard, and when the train pulls out, there we are. (laughs) Why, it's a cinch. Here, boy, take these bags. Get us a taxi. to return, I'd like your attention for just a minute. Here's some great news from Racine. Listen to this letter. It reads, Don't forget to tell our listeners about the new consumer dividend we have just declared for all our loyal customers. A dividend of one-third more for their money when they buy Johnson's self-polishing glow coat and Johnson's paste or liquid wax. Tell every housewife that right now on most dealer's counters, she will find extra large packages of glow coat and Johnson's wax containing one-third more than the regular sizes. She pays only the regular price. The extra one-third is her free consumer dividend. Tell her we declare this dividend in appreciation of the way she has been buying these famous polishes. This offer is good on all important sizes, pints, pounds, quarts, gallons, and so forth, but only while the supply of these extra-large packages lasts. Tell her to hurry if she wants to get one-third more free Next time she buys Johnson's Glow Coat or Johnson's Paste or Liquid Wax. Where 
Hurry up, Molly. We ain't got much time. You find me a clean shirt? Yes, I laid it on the bed, dearie. Did you find yourself a bite to eat? Yep, and I found a half a cake in the bread box. Heavenly days. I baked that cake for me birthday two weeks ago. Oh. Wasn't it pretty dry? Yeah, it was too dry to eat. But the candles were good. <laughs> If I get the wick ups, you'll know what done it. <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? Wick, wick ups, hiccups? Ain't funny, McGee. I shouldn't have explained it. Should have left it for the smart one. <laughs> now, McGee, that train's due in 20 minutes. Better hurry and shave. Shave? And wash all this makeup off? <laughs> well, then, Mr. Muni. If you're going to leave that makeup on, you better touch up your eyeshadow a little. Why, what's the matter with it? I had the best makeup man in Hollywood apply that there eyeshadow there. That was quite a while ago, dearie. It isn't quite even now. Huh? Your right eye looks dreamy and your left eye looks sinister. <laughs> well, I'll tell him I was playing a dual role. Well, say, how about my speech? I suppose i got to say something to the welcoming committee. Well, you Let's sure. see now. Yeah. Well, folks, that's kind of homey and democratic. Yeah. Folks, I wish to thank you for this tremendous ovation on behalf of myself and my supporting cast, Molly McGee. We're glad Where do you get that supporting cast? What am I, a splint on a broken leg? <laughs> oh, well, Chuck, this is just tentative. I... Oh, dear, oh, dear, don't answer it. Huh? I'll peek through the curtains. Oh, oh, it's Billy Mills and Uppy. Shall I let him in? No, 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 goodness, no. She's too gabby. We'd never get to the station. Why does she keep coming around here anyway? We don't encourage her any. To her, we're just common people. Search me. Water ought to seek its own level, even if it is just a big drip. <laughs> hey, take a peek at the tender way she hangs on the mills, will you? Yeah. Like she was a campfire girl and he was her marshmallow. <laughs> Quiet, dearie, not so loud. Oh, apparently the McGee's are still away. Well, let's not linger any longer, precious. Okay, if that's the way you feel, Bubbles. I just thought this gazebo might give me the lend of a solitaire suit for mine got here. Oh, really? I don't think Mr. McGee has one to lend you. He always struck me as being a rather uncouth person. Well, I won't. You hear that, Molly? I like that. Don't you worry, dearie. You're just as cool as any man in town. <laughs> yes, coother, in fact. <laughs> Mrs. McGee, oh, <laughs> my, did you ever notice the way she dresses? <laughs> Positively dowdy. <laughs> Howdy, dowdy. <laughs> well, there's no use sticking around this dot any longer, Cookie. We'll come back tomorrow and borrow McGee's outfit. Oh, you will, will you? Oh, uh, Dr. Mills, um, oh, uh, may I call you William? Uh, just call me Willie. <laughs> well, then, Willie, and now that we're alone... There's something I've wanted to ask you for a long time. Hey, hey, what's this? I I don't just know how to say it, but this being leap year... Heavenly day she's proposing to him, McGee. Oh, and seeing that you and I, uh, well, that is, that I and you are, well, uh, rather we are. Oh, Willie, can't you see what I'm driving at? You women drivers? <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Bobby? Oh, tell me, Willie. Is it true that you sleep with your mustache in a snood? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> well, come on, maestro. And goodbye to you, Mr. and Mrs. McGee. I saw you. <laughs> Why, McGee, they knew we were here all the time. The dirty eavesdroppers. <laughs> Well, McGee, we got to get a move on now. Yeah, and i got to get this speech in shape. All right, and then get that clean shirt on. Yeah. I've got to iron a slip. Now, I want you to be ready when I get to Now, let me on. see again. Folks, it is with a tug at our heart, strings, that we come back to Whistle Vista. A tinged feeling, perhaps. McGee! Huh? McGee! Fibber! You know what I did? Huh? What? I left town with me electric iron turned on, and it's burnt up me ironing board and blown all the fuses in the house. The ironing board? Oh, oh, board. dear, oh, dear. Come in. Well, glad to see you back, folks. How was everything in Hollywood? Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. Simply wonderful. <laughs> Great place, Hollywood Harlow. Those people do anything to make you happy. Why, I happen to say to a guy Sunday, I says, Look, bud, I says, what's so unusual about this California weather? I says, and you know what? In ten, ten minutes later, they put on an eclipse of the sun. 
<laughs> well, look, Molly, did you meet Clark Gable? No, but when we were down at the beach one afternoon, I did sit in one of his rowboats, I did. Molly, that CG painted on that boat meant Coast Guard. <laughs> But if you'll excuse me now, Harlow, we've got to get going because I... What's your hurry? Well, uh, confidentially, there's a big crowd at the railroad station to welcome us, Mr. Williams. Yeah, they didn't know we were coming home by a bus, and I ain't even got my speech ready. i I got to get going. Well, hey, home. wait a minute. I can help you with your speech, <laughs> Fibber. I've spoken from practically every floor in town. Oh. Now, look, Fibber, all you have to do is be straightforward, sincere. Let them see that success hasn't changed. Oh, I thought of that. And then say something like, uh, folks, we know that one big broadcast is not a real test of our dramatic ability. Fine. Why, we've no more than scratched the surface. Look out. And surface scratches on floors and furniture can easily be avoided by using Johnson's Wax. It's the <laughs> finest protection that money can buy for all wood surfaces. Good housekeepers everywhere say that Johnson's Wax is the greatest... Where are you going, Fibber? I'm going to see if I can have as much success changing my shirt as you have changing the subject. <laughs> okay, okay. I try to give you a little friendly help, and you walk out on me. So you're gone Hollywood, eh? <laughs> He is persistent, isn't he, dearie? Yeah, you can't side sidetrack a guy with a single track mind, Molly. <laughs> Where'd you say you put my shirt, Molly? On the bed, dearie. And Isn't while it? you hurry and change, I'll make a quick cup of coffee. Oh, no, I can't either. There's no electricity. Dad read it. We got more stops than a million dollar pipe organ. <laughs> I said that line right. <laughs> Here. Here's a good one by James Joyce. Smart young fella. Likes nothing but double talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, Mr. Oldtimer. I don't believe we want any books today. Hey! We don't have much time for reading these days, my good fellow. Our uh, theatrical work, you know. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, theatrical work, eh? Brucky and kids, Burlicue? <laughs> No, we ain't in Burley Cube. Heavenly days, I hope not. No. Imagine me, Gypsy Rose McGee. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. <laughs> well, what's so funny about it? I suppose you think I haven't got the... No, I mean, I suppose you mean I... No. Well, what do you mean? Oh, why, shucks, Molly, I was only trying to be... Un uh, well, you... Uh, well, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Who, me, Johnny? Yes, you. As the lumberjack says to the redwood tree, I think you've been standing around here long enough. <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. But I hear a slightly different version. <laughs> Now I'm free, but there are no strings on me. I hold, I hold the merry old wine, and have 
happy as I can be, and I want, I want you all to know nothing ever worries me. I've got no strings, so I have fun, I'm not tied up to anyone. How I love my liberty, there are no strings on me. Happy little chap with a feather in his hat, so they made me of wood, I never give a rat. Always doing good as a little puppet should, chasing each gloomy day away. McGee, the call for a cab, Doc? Why, uh... <laughs> yes, I am, bud. What's this Ronald business, McGee? Oh, well, shucks, what kind of a name is Fibber for a big actor? <laughs> I was just trying out a couple of new ones, is all. Get in, Molly. Where to, Doc? Now, look, bud, we want to go to the Union Station in a hurry. Yes, we're coming in on the streamliner and some people are meeting us. Now, wait a minute, lady. You just coming in on the streamliner? <laughs> Well, we really come by bus, you see. We're not here yet. Where are you? We're on the train. You just want to go down to the station? Huh? That's the idea, bud. Now, they don't realize we got here before the train did. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you have got here before the train did? Yes, and it's due any minute, so hurry. Look, Doc, I don't like to be pedantic. You know what I mean? But if you was going to meet a train... But you was riding on. How can you get us off long enough to meet yourselves coming in? <laughs> Look, bud, time's a wasting. Let us worry about the more abstruse aspects of the case. <laughs> you just get us down to the station in time for the streamliner. Okay, Doc. Here you are. <laughs> Dollar 40. Okay, bud, here you are. And five minutes to spare, too. Please, thanks. I hope the train ain't late so you don't keep yourself waiting. <laughs> Come on, Molly. We'll sneak around this way and walk a block or so up the track. Oh, and... look, McGee. Huh? They're raising the welcome banners. The train must be about due. Aren't you excited, Dee? Oh, yeah, kind of. Folks, we're glad to be back among with you. Or no. <laughs> Folks, this tremendous ovation. Oh, come on, Molly. Let's sneak a little closer to the crowd. There, there's so many we won't be noticed. Uh, keep your hat down over your eyes, dearie, so they won't recognize you. Okay. They're so happy to welcome us back. It'd be a shame to spoil everything for them. <laughs> uh, have they got our names spelled right on them banners? Well, I don't dare look, McGee. I don't want to be seen. We'll tell them we got in early. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, here we are. Here. Oh, here's Gildersleeve. Uh, hey, Gildersleeve, here we are. Well, hello, folks. <laughs> Wasn't it wonderful? Uh, did you see her? Uh, wait a minute. Where's everybody going? Tell them to come back. Uh, he, see who? Mrs. Roosevelt. She just passed through on the streamliner. <laughs> oh, dear. And I thought this was my day. <laughs> Well, it certainly was an inspiring sight, McGee. Yeah. Well, come on, Ma. The balloon's gone up. <laughs> well, well, I see you're all dressed up and have your suitcases with you. 
Uh, are you going someplace, McGee? Going? We've been. Is that so? Say, didn't you listen to the Lux Theater of the Air? Uh, didn't you hear that big dramatic play they did? Didn't you pay attention when Cecil B. DeMille introduced the stars? Why, no, I didn't. In fact, nobody in town did, McGee. What you mean? Well, some darn fool went away from home and left an electric iron on and blew out every fuse in town. <laughs> Before Fibber Muller return, I'd like to say a word about beauty. Smart women know that it's important for them always to look their very best for their own satisfaction and to make the proper impression on their friends. That's the reason for facials and permanence and all stuff like that there, as Fibber would say. Smart housekeepers know, too, that it's important to have their homes as attractive as possible. This doesn't mean expensive furnishings. It can be accomplished easily with very slight expense by giving floors, furniture, and woodwork that rich, mellow, glowing beauty that comes with the regular use of genuine Johnson's Wax. Johnson's Wax protects as well as beautifies, and it saves housework throughout the year. Dust and dirt cannot collect on a smooth wax-polished surface. That's why Johnson's Wax has so many extra uses for protecting windowsills, lampshades, picture frames, leather goods. You can make your home more attractive and save yourself work with a regular use of genuine Johnson's Wax Taste or liquid. Just imagine, McGee, next week we've been five years on the air for Johnson's Wax. Funny you should mention that. I just got a telegram about it from one of our listeners. Did you really? What did he say? Oh, here, I got it with me. He says, my family have listened to you faithfully for the past five years. Feel that there is strong bond between us. Oh, isn't that sweet? Yeah, but listen. He says, because we never go anywhere on Tuesday night, and neither does your program. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. This is Marlowe Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polish and Glow Coat, inviting you all to join us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.